FX Nation, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. And in this video, guys, we're going to be doing some back testing on AUD USD. So we're going to look at specifically this uh, this pair. We don't normally don't look at a lot of AUD pairs. So I found this one to be very interesting to, to look at and to, just to learn more about uh, the behaviors uh, that you would typically see on this particular pair so let's take a look and uh, do some back testing on this particular pair and see what we learn throughout the uh, the week that we review all right so without further ado guys let's get this started all right so it looks like we had how uh, we had an ending of a trending cycle super late Yeah, so it looks like market maker cycle right into a trending cycle and it ends on Thursday and then they drop it so really the question is I'm just going to assume that this is probably a, a peak formation high what do you think is that possibility there I agree yes I mean just a, an assumption that could be correct. Shit, could be wrong. I have no. We'll find out here in a second whether we are correct or incorrect. So you said that pair moves about seventy pips, something like that. About seventy-three. Yeah, it's averaging right now. Okay. So Just seeing from that high to the low, how many? Oh, from this high, yeah, it's from that high there. It's. 300 pips okay so that's about three times adr actually okay but the interesting thing is that it moved it in one day <laughs> you see that but two days basically it moved 300 three times adr in, in two days oh yeah it looks like it was that's going back normal. against <laughs> you know that's definitely not uh I wouldn't consider that something that no would be normal to happen. So, kind of curious of how much of a pullback is this going to? Uh, is it going to be? Because in that kind of a move like that, you got to have pullbacks, a bigger pullback at least before you can even, you know, start to go off on stuff. Well, this could be, hmm, maybe first leg here. Maybe this could be possibly a second leg. I guess it really depends on whether or not they take out that high, which they really don't. Yeah, they don't take out the high. There's probably an entry right here on this pullback because man I'd have to assume you gotta have a pull with the move like this of 300 pips on a two a day and a half really because it only started really during New York of the previous week and then a full freaking day of of drop you had a really nice look at that type 3 and then a, a continuation trade the very um, a really good look at that pattern here you see that pattern there that star pattern boom 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 and then straight down that's 815 right this is no no at, in New York right now that's 815 or 8 o'clock the red candle 815 candle yeah okay I wouldn't be surprised if that actually goes up and then whatever they do at 930, come back into it and then, but we'll see. Yeah. I mean, I was just, I, I'd be thinking maybe just take it to the, you know, to the 200, 50, 200. get it to the 800. That'd be fucking great. But if, let's see if this is a two to one or not, 12. Yo, Mark. Yeah. What about a multi-session W though? 
Well, that's what I'm thinking is that this ha would have to be like a first leg, second leg here, and then it goes. I meant from Friday. Oh, from Friday. Yeah. Well, I mean, then they would have to come actually back down again. You know what I mean? They got. They would have to hit this low again. This, to me, this wouldn't be a multi-day, you know what I'm saying? Right. I would want this to come back down and hit this yeah. again, if that's the case, and then go. But the fact yeah. that they didn't do that. Right, right, right. right. You know, it reads right here. This is reading the second leg already. Mm. That. So that's why I'm thinking that this is going to go. And I mean, it's only a 12. The risk is super small with the reward being freaking a five to one just to get to the 200. You know, friggin' uh, 800, just like an 8 to 1. So, the, I mean, the risk reward is super high, especially when you just moved. This is not normal for this pair to move 300 pips in a day and a half. It's just not normal. So, you got to have some kind of a pullback and get that back. You know what I mean? If they're going to move down further, that's fine. But before you can move down further, they have to come back up and recoup some of this because this is not normal. That behavior is not normal. You know? So that's why I'm thinking it's a short term buy to at least get some of that money back, maybe around here, and then you could see if you wanted to keep it going. Um, but let's see here. Yeah, see? Now the question is do they go up? to 200 or not. So they went to the week, oh no, they just created the week high. Okay. So they went what, four to one, almost a four and a half to one. So it didn't quite make it to the 200 there. That red candle, uh after the uh where, where, where we took the trade that red candle would have made me second guess if i'm reading it right and then that third blue or the second blue candle there would have been i probably would have entered like right at yeah that. i mean either way i mean even if you let's say entered here you know what i mean you could still get 15 pip stop loss i mean if if this is going to keep going down the next candle really would next two or three candles would take you out right away and so that's what you'd want anyways if you want to get taken out, get taken out right away. So you don't have to freaking hold it or anything. But yeah, so let's see what happens here on Tuesday. I mean, just look at the behavior, man. That's all you got to do. Why why would they be doing that? Think about it. Why would they be doing that? You know? Just think about why would they be doing that? You could have I mean this could be like a three legged, you know, setup there, but you have your first leg here, second leg there. You got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven candles between the first and the second leg. An entry on that pullback, you would, I mean, still look at this, all the way down here is only like 15 pips anyways. So really the the range that you could have the stop loss could be like super tight. And let's see, I mean, look, just getting almost to that, you get a two to one. I mean, it's not 30 pips, it's 23. To get 30, you need basically to go to yesterday's high. You know? So, <laughs> either, you know, if you take it super early, be here, this would give you, this candle would give you the confirmation though, because they're moving, you know, they're moving out. I think a lot of people might get scared because they see it right on top of the 50. Um, but I mean, if you, if 
you just don't get scared of that crap. Take think about it as that that's like your opportunity to take the trade. Because you're getting a pullback, you know, to uh to that candle there. So, I mean, the risk reward ratios are, are there. Let me see here. Are you getting? Yeah, so like, if you look at this also, this is already reading this as a W here. And then it comes back and it's reading it higher while this still went back down to the same area. So, you got divergence there starting already. Does anybody think that's a reversal or? It looks like it, but I would think that it's going to keep going up based on the timing. Yeah. Because that, that one, two, three, that's eight o'clock, eight, 15, eight, 30. And then that's going to the um, equities hour. So it could, I mean, it looks like it could work back into the high and then drop. But to me, it looks like it's just working back into this, into the lower part to keep going higher. But yeah, we'll see. I'd be kind of curious to see if it gets stopped you know because of these two um i mean i would assume that it just at least pushes up to this 800 man this is why you make like trading decisions on closed candles on open ones because i think this this right here could have gotten a lot of people you think that would have got a lot of people to go short that move i think so man because really? Huh. You know, I'm glad I don't look at it that way. <laughs> to me, that's a long trade all day, but yeah. only because just how I'm looking. I look at like, you know, I, I read the comments and stuff in the Telegram group, and I, I think that would have taken a lot of people to take that short, even though you didn't even have the confirmations yet. You know? Yeah. No, but you got to uh, am on the TDI up in the kind of the overbought type of range yeah yeah so it kind of kind of does show you like hey you know if you're going just off that and you're using that as your confluence i can see people getting trapped there that's what i'm saying but i mean if you just wait for the confirmations of either you know a crossover um or, or something like that then you know that's where you got to make decisions based on off the closed candles or whatnot it's not freaking you know but yeah, think about it now. They've gone back. Where's the thing at? From the time that they've they've now gone back, only eighty eight pips back from it. So I think they got a little bit more to go. I don't know, man. At least half of it, half of that move. All right, so full day, full day of rise on uh, on Tuesday. So, what's the likelihood of what kind of weekly cycle this is? What are what are the options for weekly cycle so far? Trending or maker market maker. Trending or market maker, right? Right. So, if it's a market maker, what would you want to happen? Midweek reversal. Midweek reversal. Wednesday. If it's a trending cycle, you'd want what? Continuous the higher higher highs, higher lows. Right, exactly. So if you want this to be a market maker, then you'd want a reversal. If this is going to continue to go higher, then you'd want some kind of move like that, right? So depending on what price action does, does it go straight down here? Then obviously you would get you would start thinking, okay, let's continue the trend, you know, to go higher. If you get something up here, then you already know they don't want to take out that high. You know what I mean? So these highs are, are play the important part of knowing whether or not that's a market maker cycle or not. I mean, I think you get a really good clue already by this because this is already trending down. Do you see that? It's already a halfway point here. <laughs> you know, it's you literally mean, already it's ahead of market maker. Then, you know, it's already ahead of it already. So if you even if you go to the one hour, you see, look, 
Look what you get on the one hour. This is already seeing it pulling back. Thank you, Mr. Entry. I, I would have entered after that um that last red bearish candle and the start of that. That's a blue candle on your screen. I would have looked on the one minute and I would have entered on you know real tight stop loss to go up. So you you're thinking this is gonna go up? Possibly. Okay, I was thinking of selling it because of because of it hitting at the top uh, two or three or four times. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I'm thinking this right here, if you can get a pullback on the next candle, would be a good entry for like a type two. Oh, I didn't see the pins on top. All right. On your screen, I can I can barely see that. Okay. I see what you're seeing now. Yeah. Now I see it. I was looking at the bottom. I didn't see the one, two, three pin to the top and then mm -hmm. come back to the bottom and then pin to the top. Oh, I'll stay out of that one. I'm not sure. It can go both ways. <laughs> but I do see the multiple hits to the high, and that is behavior that it wants to go lower. I mean, you got so. you got a star pattern here on the second leg. Right. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine candles on the apex of it. I mean, you're this is all good stuff here. Okay, and then to the left, there's liquidity to hit stop. So, yeah, I guess I can see it going down. So, what does it look like? So, it's only 10 pips. I keep forgetting this is only, it's almost like trading EURUSD. <laughs> so, all right, so two options. You get a pullback, half the candle back. It's a 10 pip stop loss. If you don't get a pullback, then... It's a 14 pip stop loss to take it to the 200 would be a only a one and a half so you'd have to take it longer than that so somewhere around here and let's see if you get half that candle back almost uh it's still, you still, no matter what, need to go past the 200. All right, so let's see what happens here. Shit, you got to pull back almost to the full candle. So now we got a 10 pip stop loss. Look at now, you see how big of a pullback difference this makes? Look how much, because of that pullback, now look at the trade. To get to the 200, you're at a two and a half to one. Pullback is everything, man. Makes a huge difference. Shit. That's awesome. So on that pullback right there, we're, we've decided in, we decided we're going short uh, and we've decided we're going to wait for a pullback. We're not waiting for that blue candle to close because if it closes, we're back down to where we were. Yeah. So one thing that I've that I've started to do is if I'm waiting for a pullback, and this is just to this has kind of helped me in in the sense of like I want an entry at a certain point, and to to kind of take my emotions out of it, right? Um, I kind of like to, to map this out. And let's say if I want, you know, let's say the pullback to be half of that candle, right? I would put in like a, um, a sell limit order right there. You know? And that way... If it does give me a pullback, it gives me a pullback. And if, let's say, it, like this one, for example, would have put me into the trade, but I would have gotten the entry that I wanted. You know what I mean? So yeah. if, if you're if you're trading, you know, a pair, and you're like, man, I really want to pull back because that would allow me to get into the trade. Because you're going to have sometimes where, you know, these candles, 
here are like 30, 40 pips, especially if you're trading like a pound NZD, you know, or pound AUD. That's kind of like normal behavior, you know. So if you can get a pullback, obviously then if you don't get a pullback, then you don't get a very good entry to stop loss ratio on, on those kind of pairs. So you really want the pullbacks to happen. So what ends up happening is, for me at least, it helps me just put in the order up where I want the entry to be, where I'm okay with the entry being. And if I get the entry, great. If I don't get it, then I don't get it. You know what I mean? But at least I know that if I do get it, it hit where I wanted my entry to be to begin with. Yes, I've always done market execution, and so I've never done the limit yeah. orders with the yeah. other ones before. I think for me, it just it, it helps me take out a lot of the emotional stuff out of it. You know what I mean? And so what I find myself doing um, is whenever I do put put in those kind of you know, buy limit or sell limit orders, like I'll just go to sleep or not, not even pay attention. And if it hits, it hits. If it doesn't, it doesn't, you know? How long do, I don't know anything about those. Do they stay, how long do they stay for until it triggers it? Yeah, I mean, you could, I mean, you could put it to however long you want it to be. It could be for a day. It could be for, you know. So shit, this ended up being ooh, four to one. Look at this behavior right here. Look at that. That's coming back up. <laughs> there you go. Look at that. One, you get a big solid candle. One, two, three, four dojis in a row. You can almost expect this stupid candle will come back up. And is this the bottom? It is the bottom. Yeah, you're at the bottom too. Look at that. All right, so what are we looking for now? Cells. Cells, right? Looking for cells. What do you think? I like the pins to the 800. You definitely like the pins to the 800. Um, I like this big fat candle. I like followed three dojis and then a fat candle back. I like that. Did that red candle engulf that blue candle? Not the big one, but the small one. Right, right before the big engulfment, did it close below? Okay, it didn't. But let's see the behavior. All right, covered. No, not that one. I was um, right before the yeah, the red candle before that one. Yep, that one. I was seeing if that one closed under the bullish candle, but it didn't. No, okay. covered even like a railroad track almost, and then pinned. Right. Okay. So that you know, basically an engulfing three dojis and engulfing. Where would this go to, though? To the bottom? You get a two to one to the bottom. Hmm, another pullback. Look at that. So you could have gotten a better entry, too, on this candle. So anywhere in the middle here, I mean, now you're looking even better. Damn, you already know what you're looking for. Look at that. What are you looking for? Continuation. <laughs> it's the only thing, man. It's the only thing. It's a continuation trade. You get almost like a railroad track here um, to, to the middle there. Hmm. You're, the reason it's you only want a continuation is because there's no way, you know, you at the US session, right? You're either looking for a trade that continues to move like that. So you get basically this, 
or you're trying to, you know, let's say you get this, you're trying to get a reversal, right? Well, the problem is this can't, you can't trade this reversal up, obviously, because it's already happened. So it only leaves you the option of a continuation. So, and then you're looking for cells. Yeah, so you're just looking for cells, really, is what you're doing. So the question is, you know, where, what's the, um, kind of like, what's the setup that you would look for to get into it? Because, I mean, if you look at that, that's probably spike, spike, spike. Gee, there you go. Went all the way back up. So it started this super early. You see that? But ultimately, you were right in the direction of the cell. But you would, we would have been wrong here on this. So, like, likelihood of what? You getting in probably here for a cell? You know what I mean? On a pullback or something? But you see two candles later, you're out of the trade. But damn, that's a real aggressive move. What does that look like? Oh, it definitely looks like it wants to go up. I mean, you are at a low, but to how far? I mean, I wouldn't take it, but behavior, it definitely looks like it wants to pull back into the short trade and do whatever. The question is um, how far, right? The 20 pip, 20 pip stop loss, that doesn't make a lot of sense. And I mean, really the first target would be, what is it, the 50? So I mean, two to, did I get that right, two to one? No, yeah, you because you get in. Uh, this is a star pattern, so this will allow you to get in early after this candle. So I mean, if it's like this, just to the fifty, you could do something like that. Is there a divergence on the bot on the, between the two? Um, yeah, yeah, because, you know, this one here sees it as a little bit higher than this one, but this one's obviously lower. So, yeah, you do have some divergence there. That's for sure. I just know that it's almost like, uh, you know, we're in a market maker cycle, so you really technically want to get sells, not buys, you know. And it's Friday, but I mean, you have the pattern. Um, you have good confluence here on the TDI. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Yeah, of course, it goes sideways. So, what is that? One. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, I mean, technically, you would have gotten out of that trade on that last candle here. So, it would have been like a break even or a small loss. I almost have a feeling like this might do something like that. It just depends on whether or not they break this right here. Because this almost looks like this. But this would have been like a small loss or a break even trade there. So, I mean, you're seven candles into the trade and you're not moving. Granted, you're not moving because of the timing aspect of it. So. The likelihood is that this will move during the U.S. session. The question is, does it just keep doing that, or does it give you, you know, that is really the question. There you go. <laughs> There's the freaking pin. Look at that.
That's got to be news, yeah. That's news. That's 8.30 news. Oh, this is why. This is uh, March 5th on a Friday. This is the first Friday of the week, man. This is NFP right here. That's why. <laughs> yeah, that's NFP right there. Right at 8.30. Huge spike on the U.S. Yeah. It's about a 40 pip spike. Yeah, so now taking that taking that into consideration, you probably wouldn't even been in the trade because it's Friday on a on an NFP week. But yeah, so so yeah, I don't think that that would have been a huge uh, that would have been a huge consideration. To think about is whether or not um, whether or not you would have taken that or not. All right, guys, welcome back. So I hope that uh, reviewing the back testing on this AUD USD, you're able to learn about different trigger points that you can use for any pair to determine what setup it is that you're specifically looking for. Again, on any pair, it doesn't have to be this specific pair. Um, if you like these back testing videos, guys, give this video a like, share the content, subscribe if you're not a uh, subscriber yet, and let us know in the comments what other pairs would you like me to back test. And uh, we'll do some back testing on those specific pairs. All right, guys, well, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope it provided value for you and uh, enjoy the rest of the weekend.